Good morning, hello friends, welcome back to another video, and welcome to the channel where for the entire month of June we're going to be focusing on queer authors for Pride Month. And I know I just said good morning, but it's currently 10.30 at night, because I was taking a peaceful nap, but I woke up to quite the lightning show. It's raining, it's pouring, the old man is snowing. Rain, <laughs> rain, go away, come again another day. If you don't leave the rain alone, you will suffer oh the consequences of Peter Nimble Strife. Alrighty, so that'll be $26.87. Sir, do you have a membership with us? Yo, I got that. And I know for sure that I'm not going to be able to go back to bed because I don't like the storms. And also I just took a nap at the middle of the day, which is going to make it that much harder to fall asleep. So we're just going to spend this time reading together. And I think the book that we're going to read while we do it is Detransition Baby by Tori Peters. This book came out in 2021 and it's very, very popular. It was long listed for the Women's Prize for Fiction. I've heard Jack Edwards talk a lot about how good this book is. That's kind of what I'm going off of. That's the whole reason I bought it. But this author is trans, uses she, her pronouns, and I'm pretty sure is also a lesbian. And this story, I've tried to explain it a couple times based on the back of the book, but I really genuinely cannot find the words. Reese is in a loving relationship with Amy. She's got a decent life going along. She's a trans woman, but they're missing a child. They want a kid together. But then Amy detransitions and everything falls apart. Amy becomes Amy who is now not happy either because he thought detransitioning would make life easier but it broke apart their relationship so you have one person who's trans and one person who detransitioned and then Ames's boss and lover reveals that she's pregnant with his baby so it's a weird little family triangle where they're all just trying to work together for this child I think this provocative debut is about what happens at the emotional messy vulnerable corners of womanhood she's brilliantly and fearlessly navigating the most dangerous taboos around gender sex and relationships gifting us a thrillingly original witty and deeply moving novel. Just for meaning that, I know I've never read a book like this before. I'm very interested to see how it's done. What I'm not interested in is how many words are on the pages, but it's gonna be okay. The question for Reese: were married men just desperately attracted to her, or was the pool of men who were available to her as a trans woman only those who had already locked down a cis wife and could now explore with her? It's gonna be a fun night. Also, I'm gonna try to keep this vlog spoiler free just because I think this is a really interesting book and I want to encourage more people to read it because I think it's a cool perspective. But you start this book, you're introduced to Reese and she's a little bit reckless with her sexual activity. She is a trans woman and she's going around sleeping with married men because she feels lonely. And something that was really missing from her life that she really badly wants is she just wants to be a mother. She wants to have a kid. She feels like that will help with her loneliness and that that's just such a big part of womanhood that she's missing out on. And her relationship with her ex was the closest thing to a normal relationship that she was gonna have but it didn't end up working out because that partner ended up detransitioning and I thought it was really interesting how this book talks about that because it goes back and forth between Ames and Amy depending on if you're talking about present or past tense and I feel like most people would be really scared to do that because it could come across as really offensive and like you're dead naming the person but I think it's a cool way to handle this because that is very relevant to the dynamic of their relationship so much of this book is focused on their transition so it makes sense to talk about it as two different times. So you're seeing Reese bounce around with these men. She's taking some risks with sexual health, playing into fantasies, just doing whatever anybody wants because she doesn't really care. She's just out making connections with people who want to be connected with. And then out of nowhere, Ames calls and says, hey, you still want a baby, right? And Reese says, yeah, but that's like a really disrespectful question to be asking right now because he should know how hurtful that is. And then he says, okay, great, because I just got somebody pregnant and we're gonna have a baby. Which is obviously a bit of a shock to Reese because that's the one thing that she's wanted this whole time and now her ex has found a way to get it. And it kind of all almost sounds like a brag because there's no offer in that. It was just, hey, here's this information, which I don't know if that's the best way to handle this, but it's definitely an interesting setup. It really very quickly introduces you to the dynamic of all of these characters. And then the next couple of paragraphs are going into Ames and Katrina's relationship, which Katrina is his boss. So there's another weird relationship dynamic there. It's all just a little bit silly, but also a very serious conversation. So I think it's going to do really good at keeping people interested while still talking about things that matter, which can be hard sometimes because people get bored, but I think the premise is good enough to keep people going. That is my professional book review so far. <laughs> I 
love that this book is also multiple perspective. I think with a book like this you probably would need that. You get to hear his side of the relationship and how he still misses Reese on more than a romantic or a sexual level. He loved her on a family level. He went to her for guidance as being somebody who is trans and he feels abandoned because she left or because they broke up however it ended up happening. And he doesn't want to be a dad, which is such a weird thing to think about. It's such a hard topic to get into about trans people being parents. I feel like it's something that isn't really ever talked about or considered, because I didn't know that if you start taking estrogen that you maybe can't have kids later if you stop taking them. I don't know why I said it in such a confusing way, but Ames was born a man, transitioned to a woman, and then went back to being a guy, but because he had been taking estrogen, his business wasn't doing the business anymore. And I didn't know that something like that could happen because we just aren't educated about hormones or anything like that. And then the other part of the discussion is how traditional gender roles fit into a family that has trans parents. And then what happens if somebody is non-binary? How do they fit into this idea of what parenting is? And the thing is, they have to define it and do it however they feel most comfortable, but it's something that isn't really addressed ever. It's just kind of assumed that when you have parents, they will take on certain roles and you don't consider what happens when people exist outside of that. It's just a lot of stuff that you never really think about because most people don't ever have to. day and I made it to page 32 which isn't that much but it's a start it's at least getting introduced to the characters and it's also getting introduced to the writing style which I really enjoy the language that is used because there are a lot of words in here that I don't know and it has nothing to do with being trans it's just the words in general because sometimes when I'm reading I'll just skim over things but I was doing that in this book and then I realized I had no clue what I had just read because I couldn't understand the words so I was skimming past it but I just I was not understanding a word of it so I had to go back and actually pay attention I started looking up definitions. It made me actually care about what was being said. It doesn't feel intimidating with the language. It's not like when you're reading an old classic and you can't understand anything and there's no hope. It doesn't feel intimidating like that. It just feels educated. It feels like something that you want to pay attention to, but it still feels personal enough to where you feel like you're reading a story, you know? But a big part of what I read last night was how Ames feels really disconnected from the trans women that he used to be super close with and the whole culture surrounding that. He was so accepted and he was so loved in that space and it's sort of not acceptable to to detransition because it makes it seem like being trans is just a phase. It kind of supports people who have that idea because they can point to you and say, oh, well, you didn't do it. You didn't stick with it. So that means that everybody else is faking and they should also go back. And that would really suck to feel like you have such a big part of your identity tied to these other people and then they just don't connect with you anymore. But then there's also a conversation with another person who detransitioned. And the reason was because it was too hard being a trans woman. And I'm very curious to know is Ames's reason also that it was too hard or it because that just wasn't the right identity. Work time. It's 5 p.m. There was a little change of plans. I definitely meant to read in cafe, but when I got there, they said, hey, we're down two people. Do you mind stepping on early? So I didn't end up reading anything, which is fine. It's all good and fine, and I was happy I was able to help. So I'm gonna take some time and chill. I'm gonna clean myself up, and then we'll get back into it. How do I live? What, what, what do I do to... And I looked at the women around me, especially the cis women, and, you know, they were having kids or they were having careers and, um, and that's sort of like how people were making meaning. It's 11.30 at night and I just finished chapter one because I did say I was going to read, but I did take a nap instead. I will say the chapters are very long. The first chapter was 42 pages and the pages are very, very full of text. So it feels like it takes a long time to move anywhere, but I think it works out okay because each chapter separates a different time period. So this first chapter was talking about a month after conception. The second one is eight years prior. So I'm assuming you're gonna get the history of these two people and their relationship before they broke up and split off. And then it just keeps going from there and you get to see these different points in their relationship. And also I was watching a Tori Peters interview. I'll link it below. It's just an hour long talking about this book and the inspiration and everything like that. And she said how the first chapter is focused on this whole idea of somebody wants a kid and somebody else is having a kid and somebody else doesn't want to be a parent but wants to be there and how this whole thing is working out and then from there you're telling the story so we've officially established the plot of the book where Katrina the boss wants to be in a relationship and she wants 
wants to have this kid. Ames doesn't mind staying in this relationship, but he doesn't want to be a father. He wants to be maybe a parent, but that's a distinction that most people won't understand. So he goes to his ex, he goes to Reese, who still very much wants to be a mother, and he says, hey, will you be the mother to this kid even though I haven't asked the other mom? It's a very messy dynamic, and I'm assuming it's gonna work out and they're all gonna agree to it because otherwise there wouldn't be a rest of the book. Reese consistently misgenders Ames, and she's either trying to be frustrating or she's just reverting back to what she knew for so long. Either way, it's a really weird dynamic to see somebody who is trans misgendering and misnaming somebody. And every time it happens, Ames just tries to move past it because he's on this bigger mission here, but that just, that would suck. I don't like Reese for doing that. I'm wondering if it's gonna get better as the book goes along. Not the story, but the behavior. <laughs> This whole section is going into Reese's previous relationships before getting with Ames, and how she didn't really value herself or her sexual interactions or the men that she was with. She just kind of settled because it's better to at least have something than to not have anything at all. And she thought she didn't have enough value as a person to be looking for things that she wanted. She just had to look for people who wanted her. And that's something that obviously is still holding true when she's 35, when you're in the present timeline. She's still getting into these relationships that morally aren't the greatest and they're not really supposed to be public. They're just another thing to do because she feels like that's the only way she'll have this connection with somebody. But then it also talks about how she wants disrespect from men, especially in her relationships, because it makes her feel more like a woman. And that's such a sad thing to think about. How in society we're just taught that men treat women badly and that's just a part of relationships. That's just a part of the natural dynamic to where when she is being mistreated in relationships, she feels like she can relate to other women. Each new book I read this month, I get more conflicted about giving star ratings because Allison was talking about how you can't put just a one to five rating on an experience, but also I like putting star ratings based on how I felt from the book so that I know what other books I should go for because I can look back and see which ones I enjoyed the most. And then sometimes you get a book like Manhunt where I think it does what it came to do incredibly well, but I didn't personally enjoy it. So then I don't know if I should give it a high rating because of the product or if I should give it a low rating because of my personal enjoyment. And the same thing goes for a lot of these queer books where I would automatically give them all five stars just because of the voice that they have and the topics that they're covering. But if this was written about a different topic, I don't know that I would enjoy it anywhere near as much. I don't know. That's my own personal conflict. Regardless of star ratings, I think this book is done incredibly well. I really enjoyed it. I have some notes from things in the earlier half. I don't know why I was trying to lie like that. I tried to make it seem like I have completed the book. I did not. I read through half of it, but I feel like I have an obligation to finish them to make these videos. But I got as far as I could and I still have opinions about what I did read. And it's okay that I didn't get to it all. And it's silly to lie and make it seem like I did. For one thing, I kind of already talked about this with how Ames looks up to Reese while transitioning, seeing this person who's already a pretty confident trans woman and saying, yeah, you know how to do this, I'm gonna look up to you, I'm gonna go to you for guidance. But it really emphasizes that point of just trans community and how you're constantly looking up to your elders, even if they're not 
age older. They've just had more experience in this world. And this book really focuses on creating that community and looking up to other people and learning how to express yourself and how to identify with different feelings because you know that other people have. And specifically, Reese has always felt like a mother in these environments, which goes back to the whole thing of her wanting to be a mom, where not only is she drawn to children, but she's also drawn to these younger trans people. She wants to be there to guide them. And when she sees them doing good in the future, she sees them as her kids. She feels like she helped make them who they are. I feel like I didn't explain it very, very well earlier because I was tired and I was rushing to get to work. But I was talking about how if this book is going to focus on detransitioning because being trans is too hard versus realizing that's not your actual identity. But the main thing that this book touches on is detransitioning because it's just too hard to exist. So even if Ames doesn't actively present as a woman anymore, he still feels that way. He still identifies as trans, but now it's a personal identity instead of this presentation. He doesn't want to be a man and he knows that because he doesn't want to be a father, he doesn't want anything to do with these strict gendered ideas, but he also doesn't feel comfortable going around as a woman anymore. And that really sucks when he sees other groups of trans women and he doesn't feel accepted by them anymore. They kind of look down to him and his whole experience because he's doing something that people don't like. Because you get criticisms from people saying that being trans isn't real because look here's somebody who detransitioned and that means that you could regret it and that means that you shouldn't do it. But that doesn't mean it's not something that they at one point did feel confident enough to do. Like they completely discredit the fact that Ames at one point was Amy and that was still a real experience that they had. I don't know I think it's a really interesting conversation it's not something that people really like to talk about or think about and I know I I certainly don't have the words to express it as good as this book does. I feel like I for sure misspoke some of the bigger ideas. The characters are flawed, they feel like real people, they do things that you probably shouldn't do, not just with their personal lives but also how they treat each other. Just overall they're messy people, messy relationships, messy lives. They're just kind of doing their best to get by and sometimes they do things that they shouldn't, either because it's easier or because they don't think about it or whatever else. But I like that it's just a real experience, it's not trying to paint these people as being good or perfect. It's it's just another story. And that's something that the author talks about. Again, I'm gonna link that interview in the description. It's just an hour long of her talking, but I really liked listening to it. She talked about how it's not her job to explain the trans experience to other people. And a lot of times when you're reading books with this topic, the author has to keep stopping and saying, hey, here's what this procedure is, here's what this treatment is, or here's what this feeling is, and here's the different ways that people can experience it. And it turns out being more of a textbook than a story, and she talks about how it's not her job to be explaining that to people. People. She wrote the story as if trans people would read it, people who already know and understand the experiences in this. So you don't need to explain the process that goes into getting hormones or wanting surgery or anything like that because you assume that the reader does know. And by doing that, you have to actually write a good story. You can't just rely on explanations. You can't just fall back on definitions to get you through the pages. You have to actually have something to say about the topic. And I think those other books that talk about definitions and explanations, I think that's helpful too because obviously there are so many people that know so little about the whole experience, but underrepresented groups don't owe you the information, you know? They're allowed to put out media and put out whatever they want and they don't have to explain themselves. If you want to, that's great and it'll probably help some people, but if you don't want to, that's also great and it also means that the people who already do understand and can relate will relate more because they know that they don't need it explained to them. They're already feeling and living these experiences. I definitely did not explain that in as clear of a way as she did, so for sure watch that interview. I feel so silly. I feel like I I'm not educated enough to be talking about a book like this. I feel like everything I'm saying is just not coming across how I want to in this video. In this book, the three of them, the three main people, don't all get together until like the middle of the book and everything up until then is learning about Reese and Ames as individuals. So you know that Reese goes out and is pretty disconnected from sex and will just use people who want to use her to have this mutual connection. She doesn't really value herself, she just goes into these relationships because it's something that the other person wants and she's just taking what she can get. And then you get into Amy where she would dissociate while having sex. She would imagine herself to be a woman and she would completely disconnect from the actual thing that's taking place. So you get to see that both of these characters have very interesting ways with dealing with their bodies and how other people perceive them. And they both do sometimes harmful things in order to play into gender stereotypes. They feel like women are treated badly by men and they like being degraded because it makes them feel more like women. They mentioned that some people would say that that's just them being anti-woman and supporting the idea of being aggressive and violent towards women, but they say that this isn't the society that they made, this is just the one that we live in. But that also goes into the whole bigger idea of just playing into stereotypes. 
and doing anything to fit in even if it isn't true to your feelings. So in this situation, Amy having sexual interactions with people even when she's not really feeling it. And that's something that I've seen across a lot of the books that I've been reading where you have stuff like In All Boys Aren't Blue where they talk about how they wanted to play jump rope with the girls but that wasn't acceptable so they had to switch to a different sport in order to prove their masculinity to these people. But yeah, the characters don't get together until halfway through the book and then I don't really want to talk about what goes on in the rest of it because you just gotta read to find out. And that's all I got for this video. I'm tired and I feel like these reading vlogs are getting less and less informative, but I'm still having fun reading. I am doing reading vlogs focused around queer authors for all of June, so if you would like to see more videos like this, you can subscribe to this channel, or if you just like my face, you can subscribe to my main channel, River Bend, where I post music content, or my Instagram, Spotify, TikTok, Goodreads, and Storygraph, which I'll have linked in the description. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you tomorrow with another video.